Hi there, this is a piece of audio content that is only available in full over at patreon.com slash elwoodcitylimits. We wanted to give you a little bit of a preview to show you what you might be missing out on. You can join us for as little as $1 under the pay what you want model at patreon.com slash elwoodcitylimits and get access to over dozens of hours of content, including every episode of For the Kids, a PBS Kids podcast. We appreciate you listening, whether you're a patron or whether you're listening on the free feed. You're under no obligation to join, and thank you very much for checking out this preview. But if you'd like to know what these episodes and extra content sounds like, here's a little bit of a sneak peek. You know, the first kind of inkling that there might be something to this Lucas Mancini guy was before I even, like, introduced you, was before we even worked together. It was when we were going to school together, and you were a, you were a bright-eyed young man who was... Uh, winning over people with with your with your charm and uh your humor and i kind of looked over and i was like well he's got a new japan shirt so he can't be all bad (laughs) that's right (laughs) that's right and i remember you wearing a daniel bryan shirt many a time oh yes uh back in community college so wow the wrestling connection between me and you really goes a lot deeper um and it's yeah i'm I'm excited because it is kind of a big it's it's weirdly because, you know, I, I know how big of a part of your life it is, Will, because you talk about it on Twitter quite a bit. And so it kind of gives me that insight. But wrestling is kind of an outsized part of my life compared to other people. Uh, and it's not often I actually talk about it uh, outside of kind of my close inner circle. So this is this will be interesting. So let, so let me dig into that a little bit. And there will be a, a give and take here, of course. But my interest is in you, the way that you look at wrestling and the way you came into it. And that's where I wanted to, to start off with. I think both of us probably have a memory like a, 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 a first memory associated with the time where we grasped that professional wrestling existed to some degree. What is your first memory or initial memories of finding out that professional wrestling even existed? Now, when you kind of sent me the outline of this episode, Will, I was really excited when I saw this question because I know the exact I know the exact moment. And it's interesting because I feel like traditionally people who are into wrestling and who are as old as we are uh, usually get into it, you know, when they're in elementary school or something. Yeah. Uh, and then they kind of have a lasting affinity for it. For it. That was not my experience uh, because my parents were pretty strict about what I could watch on TV. It's why I have such a uh, encyclopedic <laughs> familiarity with Arthur. Yes. Uh, because that was educational and my parents were a fan of it. But I was never allowed to watch the likes of, you know, the Power Rangers or something because it was too violent. Um, and they most certainly wouldn't have let me watch wrestling. Now, I don't think I even had knowledge of wrestling as a kid. I I wasn't really into sports and stuff. So I feel like if I had turned on wrestling, I wouldn't even have known what to think of it. Sure. Really, my journey into wrestling started probably in junior high where me and my buddy, uh, a friend of the show, uh, Josh Owen, uh, Cookerzilla, uh, we're uh, going to like a, C- a store called CD Heaven, which sold used records and CDs and DVDs. And we bought a uh, the WrestleMania matches of Hulk Hogan uh, uh, DVD. Uh, blind buy. I don't know what compelled us to do such a thing. Okay. Um, and we watched... Uh, first, we tried to watch the first match from WrestleMania 1, but I don't know if you go back and watch that match. It's pretty... <laughs> like it's so old that it's it's like hard to even conceive of what's going on for someone with no context. Oh yeah. So then we watched WrestleMania two. Okay. Hulk Hogan versus King Kong Bundy, uh, in a steel cage match. That's right. Yeah. And uh, this would be you know if you were to watch this match, Will, you would probably laugh at what I'm about to say. Okay. But for someone who has never seen professional wrestling before, yes. Right. You you have no experience with the rhythm with which it operates right you don't know what a face and a heel is this was total magic it was like nothing i'd ever Mm. seen before it totally captured my imagination um and from there it was a lot of youtube videos and dvds and and making up for lost time you know learning about the attitude era and the ruthless aggression era uh and then you know watching raw week to week and eventually 
you know, getting into, uh, like, the internet culture around wrestling. I used to be a, a heavy user of the 420 Chan slash Woo forum. Oh, sure. That was, my, that was my particular poison, which I believe doesn't exist anymore. Okay. Uh, but that's where I would go for my wrestling discussion. Uh, and that's how I discovered things like, yeah, like New Japan Pro Wrestling and, and, and stuff like that. Which, you know, as I got older, that, that, that was some of my favorite stuff and stuff that we bonded over. You know, around 2013 to 2015, that's when you would have spotted me with that t-shirt in community college. Yes. Um, and then that kind of brings us to today, where I am a regular weekly watcher of wrestling. I always say, people always try to recommend me TV shows. I always tell them, you know, I really only watch uh, two TV shows. That's professional wrestling and Love Island when it's on in the summertime. I really don't have a lot of time for TV in my life. Uh, if I'm going to watch anything, it's going to be a movie or, you know, maybe some old anime. Yeah. Uh, but besides that, you know, I don't watch Netflix shows uh, because a lot of my TV watching time is taken up by, by wrestling. And so that's kind of my life story with wrestling uh, in short. What about you, Will? Well, so I, I, ju I just want to kind of confirm here. How old would you have been when you saw uh Bundy and Hogan in the cage. It would have been junior high. I can't remember, okay. you know, what time in junior high, but I I would have been like I don't know, like 2009, 2008 or something. And that's yeah. and and that's kind of the 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 experience that you credit with spurring the interest forward and wanting to learn more. Yeah, I mean my grandfather used to watch wrestling when I was really young, but I yeah. was so young I didn't really know what was going on. My first memory of ever seeing wrestling in my life yes. would have been the lead up to WrestleMania 18 uh with uh Hulk Hogan and The Rock oh, feuding sure. Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I kind of remember um my grandfather watching, I can't even remember if this was SmackDown or Raw, but like Hulk Hogan's trying to get into the stadium and security won't let him in and then they're scared of him and then like The Rock is like cutting a promo in the ring. That would have been the first wrestling I've ever seen ever. Gotcha. Uh but it didn't really like I it didn't really compute kind of until I discovered yeah, Hulk Hogan versus King Kong Bundy. Very interesting how how it happens that way. And and I mean like you said it's not something that we as like seasoned wrestling fans are necessarily going back to watch but you know, I think that's like a common theme that I find in people's first experiences is that it often comes in a way that you wouldn't you wouldn't expect, or people latch onto characters or uh, personas or just elements of it that you kind of that you would never expect being in it for so long as we have. Like I remember finding out that during the pandemic, my buddy, uh, his girlfriend, who notoriously like hated wrestling for years finally got into it because of the storyline between Rey Mysterio and uh, Buddy Murphy at the time, and Buddy Murphy <sighs> dating uh, Rey Mysterio's daughter on screen. Well, and so th that's actually a really interesting point, Will. You know, it's important to think of wrestling as something, uh, you know, it's an art form unto itself, and it's something like literature, right? Yeah. When you are getting into books, okay, you're not going to start with Dostoevsky. You know, yeah. you're not going to start with – if you were getting into books and you were like, well, I, I'm going to crack open Finnegan's Wake, that's probably the wrong way to go about it. Sure. And in a way, for me, you know, Hulk Hogan versus King Kong Bundy is to wrestling what the very hungry caterpillar is to literature, <laughs> right? And, and that's kind of how you're supposed to do it. You start with the very hungry caterpillar, and then you you know you're reading Harry Potter, and eventually you're like, okay, let's crack open Gravity's Rainbow. Um, right. And and so if you look back at that story I just told you, you can kind of see the same. You know, in a way, some of those New Japan matches are the Gravity's Rainbow of professional wrestling, and so um, you can kind of see the trajectory there. Um, and yeah, I bet if I went back and watched Hulk Hogan versus King Kong Bundy now, I'd find it downright boring. But not being familiar with those elements, it was it was so magical. Or um, there may be something there that you just never noticed because you weren't able to at the time. You, you really, yeah. it's hard to it's hard to tell sometimes. Uh, anyway, to to answer your question from before, so similarly to you, I was not allowed to watch wrestling as a kid. Okay, that's going to do it for now, but we will see you next time on Elwood City Limits or at patreon.com slash Elwood City Limits if you decide to join us. Thank you very much and have a great week.